Hello, I'm Nick Huntington Klein, and today I'm going to talk to you about the basics of the bivariate ordinary least squares model. Uh, so what this is, is this is a sort of workhorse model in econometrics, right? The idea is that we have some data, uh, and we are going to work with that data. And, and what we want to do is we want to describe a relationship between two variables in some data. Uh, we'll let's call them x and y. And in particular, what we're trying to do is we are trying to use x to predict why uh, we're saying for a particular if I, if I give you a value of x you should be able to give me back some prediction about what you think y is likely to be uh, so that's good both for predictive purposes but also and importantly it tells us about the relationship between x and y uh, because if your prediction of what y is increases when i give you a higher value of x that tells you that the two variables are related to each other and specifically that they have a positive relationship if I say, hey, x is 5, and you say, oh, well, then I predict y is going to be 10. And then I say, oh, well, now x is 6. And you say, well, now I predict that x is going to be tw or that y is going to be 12. That tells me that you think that an increase in x is related to an increase in y, and the two variables are positively related. Uh, alternately, you could find that the two variables were negatively related, or that they're not related at all. But in general, we need to have some way of explaining the relationship between two variables, and that brings us to the bivariate ordinary least squares model, where bivariate means we're working with just two variables. We'll work with, we will work with multivariate ordinary least squares later. Uh, and ordinary least squares meaning that it does its job by trying to find the line uh, that minimizes the squared sum of residuals, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. But for now, let's just focus on our data. Let's say that we have two variables. Let's call them x and y. And here they are. Here is a graph of our data. Uh, now, you can see pretty clearly, the, the data that I've given here is, has a pretty clear relationship. There's a positive relationship. The higher values of x appear to be related to higher values of y at the same time. So that's pretty good. Now, the problem is, though, if I want to actually take this and describe precisely what the relationship is, or if I want to make a pre precise prediction about what I think y is, given what x is, I still have some more work to do, right? Because imagine that I have an x value of 2.5. And I want to say, okay, given that I have an x of 2.5, what do I predict the value of y is going to be? Uh, so from there, it's a little bit harder to, to make that prediction. And, it's, and from, by extension, it's going to be harder when we want to then say, well, as x increases by a certain amount, how much is y going to increase by? So we want to have a single number. We want to have a single number in and a single number out. Single x in, single y out. Uh, but here, it's not exactly clear what we should do. Uh, because, you know, well, first of all, well, maybe we can just uh, figure out uh, what observations there are at a value of x is 2.5, and then we can make that prediction. Well, here there's a problem because we have three different observations that are pretty much exactly x is 2.5, and if we have three to choose between, which one are we going to use for our prediction? Are we just going to average them out for our prediction? Well, maybe that'll work, but then also what happens when we have no observations of x? Well, over here at x is 4.3, there are no really observations that are that close uh, to 4.3, at least none that are really precisely close, like this for 2.5. So what are we going to do? I'm going to say, well, for 2.5, I'll average those three observations. And for 4.3, I'll just throw up my hands and walk away. There's nothing I can say. Well, that's silly, because you could clearly see from the data that I can probably make a pretty good guess as to what goes in that 4.3 gap where I don't actually have any data, right? So how can we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to fit a shape to the data. We're going to say we're going to simplify uh, this data process. I'm not going to show you all the data. Instead, I'm going to take the data that I have, and I'm going to simplify it down. I'm going to take a shape. I'm going to represent my data using a shape. That's the process of regression. Okay, I'm going to fit a shape to this data. Once I have a shape, now shapes are not individual data points. They're shapes, right? Uh, and so I can take any point on that shape. I can give you an X, and you can give me back a Y. And in particular, the shape that I'm going to choose with ordinary least squares is a straight line. I'm going to take a straight line. I'm going to pick the best straight line. That's a shape, right? I'm going to take the best straight line that fits onto that data. I'm going to move my straight line all around until it happens to line up just right uh, with the data that I have, and then I'm going to stop, and that's going to be the line that I'm going to use. So when I have this line in place, it does a couple of things for me. One, if I plug in a value of x, it will spit out a, a single value of y. Because I just instead of looking at all the different data points that there are around that value of x, I can follow the value of x up until I hit the line, and then that will be the value of y that I have. There we go. 
So that's the first thing the line does for me. It simplifies the prediction because I can put in the X and just follow it up until I hit my line, my shape. And that's going to tell me exactly what value of Y I'm going to predict. It also tells me about the relationship between X and Y. Because how can we describe a line? Well, a line can be described, a straight line can be described with two pieces of information, the intercept of the line and the slope of the line. The intercept tells us how high, high up and down that line is, and the slope tells me the angle that it is, right? So given those two pieces of information, I can, that's all the information that I need to know about the line. The intercept tells me what my prediction of y is going to be if x is equal to 0, right? If I plug x equals to 0 into that equation right there, I'm going to get the slope, the slope times x is going to drop out. I'm just going to have the intercept. But the part we're really interested in is that slope, because the slope tells me as the value of x increases by 1, here's how much I expect the value of y to increase by as well. Let's say, for example, this is the uh, ordinary least squares line that we come up with, that y is equal to 3 plus 4 times x. 3 is our intercept there, 4 is our slope. And so if I have a prediction, uh, if I, let's say I plug in x equals 1, if I plug in x equals 1, uh, then I would plug in x equals 1, I would get 3 plus 4 times 1, it would be 7. Well, what if I get bigger values of x? If I do bigger values of x, I will predict bigger values of y. And in particular, every time x increases by 1, my prediction for y will increase by 4. That will tell us the relationship between x and y. It's positive. As x goes up, y goes up as well. Uh, it tells me the size of that relationship. As x goes up by 1 unit, y goes up by 4 units. And that's pretty much what I'm looking for. I want to know what is the relationship between x and y, and I have now figured that out. So, regression is a process that fits a shape to data. In this particular case of ordinary least squares, it fits a straight line. Uh, we can describe that straight line using an intercept and a slope. Uh, with that line in place, I can give you an x. You can plug it into that line equation and give me back a prediction for y. It also tells me about the relationship between y and x using the slope. If it's a positive slope, then that tells me that as x goes up, y goes up as well. If it's a negative slope, that tells me that as x goes up, y goes down. Uh, and that's, and that's really all what we're interested in. We want to know the relationship between these two variables. All right, that's it. Thank you.